For over 10 years, Ben Goodwin and David Lester had a mission to make a drink that was delicious, gut healthy, full of fiber, and low in sugar. The catch? It would be a soda. In 2018, the duo launched Olipop, a prebiotic soda with eight plant-based ingredients to support digestive and gut health. In its first year of business, the company made a gross revenue of $852,000, selling only at 40 grocery stores in Northern California. Compared to today, where Olipop has grown exponentially, the prebiotic soda market closed 2022 with a gross revenue of $73.4 million and is projected to surpass $200 million in sales by the end of 2023. The drink has witnessed breakthrough success as more and more consumers discover the benefits of gut health and sits within the prebiotic market, which is expected to hit $21.2 billion by 2030. There are three numbers to look out for in the story. $100,000, the initial investment Goodwin and Lester put in Olipop, $73.4 million, the gross revenue Olipop ended 2022 with, and $20 million, the sales Olipop has seen each month in 2023. Here's how a $100,000 investment turned Olipop into a multi-million dollar soda company. Ben Goodwin, a San Francisco native, says he grew up overweight and eating what he called the standard American diet. At 14 years old, he decided to make a healthier lifestyle for himself. The lifestyle stuck with him through adulthood, but it wasn't until 2005 he realized he wanted a career switch to focus on nutrition. I actually read the book by the Cliff Bar founder on the founding of Cliff Bar, and I just, I guess it just dawned on me, I guess I can go be a food or beverage entrepreneur. And so at 20, I uh, dropped out of college where I was going for environmental science and helped a friend start a kombucha company. Meanwhile, David Lester grew up in Northwest England and attended college for management studies. In 2006, he went on to work at Diageo, a spirit company based in London. But almost after 10 years there, he felt the need for a change. I think I was becoming frustrated with the bureaucracy of a large uh, company. And so I, I kind of dared myself to say, look, if think so smart, why don't you go and give it a go yourself? Through mutual connection at Diageo, Ben and David connected at a coffee shop to discuss a potential partnership in Ben's prebiotic soda company, Obi. So Ben and I first met at a coffee shop in Palo Alto, and I remember turning up and Ben had this bag of sodas with him. I think at the time he was making them in soda stream bottles and decanting them into these beautiful uh, glass champagne bottles that he got. and. Ben blew my mind with his knowledge of uh, the gut microbiome, probiotics, his passion for what he was doing. It was a very different type of conversation than I'd be having in my corporate career. Two weeks after their initial meeting, they became partners. However, the product they worked on wasn't Olipop. It was a probiotic soda called Obi and had a different formula than Olipop has, but it wasn't seeing the success and traction they had hoped for. After selling the company in 2016, Ben and David decided to take all they had learned from Obi and try formulating a healthy soda again. This was after Ben looked at new research and emerging science around microbiome and metabolic health. I got really inspired by that. And I think we both reflected on our prior venture and thought to ourselves, okay, we got really good traction with our customers. We saw a really clean signal that in fact, the time had arrived for a healthy soda. You know, I felt like it would be a wasted experience if we didn't then go on and put into practice what we'd learned. So we just kind of started out again and, and that excitement returned. It took two years for Ben and David to perfect their new soda recipe before hitting the market. They came up with an entirely different formula for Olipop than Obi had. Ben and David were able to take the $100,000 they received from selling Obi and put it towards launching Olipop. They say about $70,000 of that went to branding and the remaining $30,000 went to formulating the product to be mass produced. But when we were first launching Olipop, there was really nothing like it on the market. In fact, most investors said to us, it was a stupid idea, a healthy soda. Nobody's gonna, gonna be interested in that. At the time, soda was a declining category in the beverage business. But Ben and David only saw this as an opportunity to look at soda differently. A key component to Olipop's formulation process was achieving similar flavor profiles as iconic soda brands, but with a much healthier nutrition label. I've always uh, been really excited to make sure to meet the actual customer need for the flavors they grew up drinking. We want to make sure that we match their expectations for the traditional soda experience. As the formulation came to a close, they still needed to figure out branding, as well as a name for their product. Out of 75 different options, the team landed on Olipop for a couple of reasons. 
The coast call soda soda, the Midwest calls it pop, and the South calls soda coke. So the pop in Olipop is definitely a reference to soda. The Ollie is a little less accessible. There's a group of prebiotic fibers called oligosaccharides, which is a really fun 50 letter word that no one will remember. But shortened down, we just called it Ollie. And so basically it was a fiber and prebiotic soda. And so we shortened it to Olipop. Around the end of 2018, Olipop was ready to go to market but the process of getting cans on shelves was another hurdle to jump. That's a pretty complex process because you need a distributor to bring your product to a store, but typically you need to have some stores lined up in order for a distributor to want to take your product. That's exactly the situation we found ourselves in. Ben and David approached a small direct store delivery distributor and pitched Olipop to them. The distributor was on board, but only if Ben and David could pre-sell their products to 100 stores. David and I just got in our little cars and drove to a bunch of uh, natural grocery stores uh, all around the San Francisco Bay Area, basically telling them that for sure any day now we were gonna have distribution and they should definitely carry our product. I think we actually pre-sold to something like 40 or 50 stores. And I don't know if the distributor took pity on us or they just got excited, impatient and wanted to start selling the product and became more believers themselves. But somewhere around that mark, they said, okay, fine. We'll take a couple pallets of your product and we'll start moving it. In the beginning of 2019, Olipop launched in three flavors, ginger, strawberry vanilla, and cinnamon cola, across 40 different health food stores in Northern California. A fourth flavor was launched that year, root beer, and the name cinnamon cola from its launch line was changed to vintage cola. By 2020, Olipop made a gross revenue of $8.6 million, then skyrocketed to $29.7 million in 2021. As the drink's popularity rose, the team wanted to keep refining what their prebiotic soda looked and tasted like. So Ben continued to work on new flavors to launch. You know, from the moment we launched, Ben was already thinking about what new products we were gonna do. He was working on them. Yeah, he invests like hundreds of hours in each product, ensuring that not only does it deliver on the functional benefits, but also that those products deliver on taste. So I spent a lot of time just really developing a perspective on the formula and then thinking about what kind of ingredients and what kinds of ratios are going to need to come together to build that. Many popular soda brands can pack in about 39 grams of sugar. Olipop slashes that number down to 2 to 5 grams while also providing 9 grams of fiber. And each can costs about $2.49. Olipop closed 2022 with a gross revenue of $73.4 million with approximately 50 million cans sold within the year. Ben and David said they paid themselves very low salaries and lived off their savings while the company grew. Today, Olipop has grown exponentially since its start. Between 2021 and 2022 alone, it saw a 223% growth in revenue. 2022 was a huge year for Olipop and kicked off with a Series B early stage VC funding round in January. A total of $39.7 million was raised and big names like Gwyneth Paltrow, Mindy Kaling, and all three Jonas Brothers are on the list of investors. The funds were spent on brand growth and hiring more team members. Olipop continues to break through in the soda industry along iconic rivals like A&W and Pepsi. I feel like the product is actually living up to the mission that we set for it. And in one of our largest national retail partners, Olipop is now a larger brand than Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Canada Dry, and our root beer is outselling A&W. Olipop has over 100 employees and keeps overhead low by being completely remote. The sales so far in 2023 are about 20 million a month. The company said it is on track to cross $200 million in sales by the end of 2023. And for Ben and David, the success stems from their first attempt at launching a healthy soda brand. I think the success we're having now is really built on the mistakes that we've made in the past, but that's challenging to keep pace with a business that's growing that quickly, hold our culture together. It's been an interesting journey and, and learning experience going through that as well. In early 2023, Olipop named singer-songwriter Camila Cabello as its first celebrity spokesperson. She's also an investor. Part of Olipop's success has been credited to Gen Z and millennial social media users who flock to places like Instagram and TikTok to talk about the drink. Various ideas and recipes for consuming Olipop are seemingly unlimited on social media. Between December 2022 and January 2023, Olipop Google searches spiked 
and within the first six months of 2023, Olipop has earned about $100 million in gross revenue. The soda has gone from selling in only 40 stores to over 23,000 stores across the US and is on track to sell at 30,000 stores by the end of 2023. The founders say this is only the beginning of the Olipop journey, and there's no shortage of research to be done and flavors to be created. I am uh, excitedly working on some really exciting nostalgic flavors for uh, that have also been customer requests that we're launching next year. And you know, we'll see where the future takes us. We want to take this product well beyond a billion dollars. I think that the potential is there. Um, but we also have the humility to know that's really difficult. So, you know, we're going to keep working the way that we have been and, and see where this exciting journey takes us next.